forever. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of Jesus, risen gloriously from the dead, and with you always. Loving Christ Jesus is the new temple made without hands, raised up from the tomb. We too are living temples of his grace. Let us pray that we might proclaim by our life the glory of the resurrection. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most serious fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, of all the angels and saints, and of you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to our everlasting life. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O Lord, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption in Christ, we may look forward in confident hope to the glorious day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence 
when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has, bought, has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our <coughs> sins, and not only for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we may know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. 
Two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do you question arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish, which he took and ate in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scripture. And he said to them, Thus it is written that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead, and on the third day repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses to all these things. The Gospel of the Lord. The other day I had to call the cable company, well the satellite company, I have the DISH satellite, because it was doing a little wonky things and it needed some kind of crazy adjustment. And the man came and he said, you know, he said, we can make this picture a hundred times better. He said, it's the cable. And he had this new fancy cable, it was only 30 bucks, he said, and I'll put this new cable on and the picture will be so much clearer and much more vivid. He said, all the HD channels will just seem to be jumping out at you. And then I said, but mostly I just watch Perry Mason. And that's just all black and white. And the man laughed. But one of the things I noticed on the old black and white shows, and I do love the old TV shows much more than I do anything more modern, especially if they're black and white, I enjoy them, is one of the things you notice is that Perry Mason and some of the others, they're just bringing back a new one. If you remember, I vaguely remember this as a child, Highway Patrol. And one of the interesting things is, all of the stars are old. Highway Patrol, that man is, has been. You think, my God, then here's he's the star of the show and he's an old man. And he's the star. And I've noticed that in the 50s, in, in the 1950s TV programs, all of the top people are older people. The younger people are in the less important roles, but the top roles are for people who are much more mature in their 40s or 50s, even in their 60s. These are the ones that are at the top. All of that switched in the late 1960s and into the 70s when we got into this youth culture. And so now, if you're 30 years old, you're considered a has-been in many of these Hollywood places. Everything is youth, everything is young. And for us that are older, we kind of smile at this, or maybe we sneer at it, but uh, we recognize that there's something that goes on here as the culture changes and it goes cyclical. It'll all come back again eventually. We'll laugh at the programs that people think are so wonderful now. But what I can't help but think is that in heaven, there also seems to be a preference for the young. Now why I say that is each day when we offer the Latin Mass, I say the same thing at every Mass. In Ivo ad artari dei, a laetificat juventutem meum. And the prayer is, Lord, I come to the altar of God, to the God who restores me to my youth. And so as we approach the altar of God, we recognize this restoration of youth. We hear it in the opening collect that the Easter sacrament, the Easter Paschal mystery, restores to us that gift of youthfulness, youthfulness of spirit. Also, I find it rather interesting, uh, Fulton Sheen, I think, was the first time I heard someone say this. He said, it's a rather interesting thing that when you look at the history of Marian apparitions, now, by tradition, the Holy Virgin Mary uh, left this world in her darmition, falling asleep, at the age of 72, that's the tradition. And so at the age of 72, Our Lady falls asleep in death, and before any stain of corruption could touch her, her body is miraculously assumed into heaven. That's the dogma of the assumption of Our Lady into heaven. And Fulton Sheen would say, so here's this blessed mother who died at the age of 72, but in every appearance of the Virgin Mary, 
she always appears as a young girl between the ages of 15 and 17, 16. She always appears as a very young girl. That's as if this is heaven's model. And so we consider, and Saint, or Fulton Sheen would also make the comment about that, he said, because of that, there are no old people in heaven. That when we get to heaven, God willing, we enter into the kingdom of heaven, we are restored back to that most perfect time in our life. We are restored back to the fullness of joy and to that youthfulness of spirit. And so this is an anticipation that we have of the glorious resurrection. And so the colic makes reference to that today. And what is the cause? What is the source of that youthfulness? And so we recognize that the cause of our youthfulness is the power of the resurrection. That as Christ rose gloriously from the dead, he breaks the chains of sin and death. He also breaks the consequences of sin and death. And although, even though we are redeemed, we've been baptized in Christ, we still suffer from the consequences of original sin. And that is that we physically decay uh, and that also ultimately we will die. That's the consequences of original sin. But in eternity, those consequences are gone. And so we are restored in heaven to our joyfulness of youth, to the true maturity of youth in a most perfect and in a most beautiful way. And so we anticipate this glory. Our blessed Lord appears in the midst of his apostles. And what is the greeting that he gives them? Peace be with you. And in some ways, it's the ultimate cry of optimism, of looking for the reality of the most beautiful and perfection of God's presence, that even in the midst of difficulty, and the apostles are going to suffer very difficult, very difficult things, all of them, save John, will die a martyr's death. And yet in all of this, the Lord says, peace be with you. Because he reminds us that it's because of his passion and death that ultimately you and I will be restored, as it were, to that joyfulness, to that original state to which God had made Adam and Eve. Now, when Adam and Eve were created, one would almost wonder if they were created at the age of maybe 17 or 18, uh, because they weren't certainly infants when they were created by God, it was an instantaneous creation. And so there seems to be this preference in the scripture, even from heaven, uh, in the apparitions of our blessed lady, always as a beautiful young girl. And the messages are always the same, for us to be obedient to Christ, to listen to his voice, to heed his voice, which always leads to peace peace within our own heart, even in the midst of difficulty and even in the midst of all the horrors of this life. And we find that in the world, there's a rebellion against this idea of being restored to what God truly created us to be. And so what do we find? An imitation. There's an imitation of this youthfulness. And so you watch on TV and people are putting crazy things under their eyes to take the wrinkles away. And people will spend very good money to put this stuff under their eyes, to take the wrinkles away. But in about four hours, guess what's going to pop back? The wrinkles are all going to come back, right? The wrinkles don't go away. Or people will stretch their faces, and when they get old, they look like clowns because everything's been so stretched out of shape. And so we can try to cheat the clock. We can try to cheat to create our own youthfulness. But it always fails. And so God is the one that restores us to our youthfulness. And even in this life, we are called to look at life, not in a jaded sense, not in a defeatist sense, but always with the anticipation that God is not only in my midst, but he's also in the midst of the world, that everything is leading to a purpose, everything is leading to a crescendo. Right now, we're once again in bad times. If you caught the news in the night, uh, Iran launched an attack against Israel, showering down missiles, uh, kind of nasty missiles right now, but I'm sure Israel will retaliate and then eventually the missiles will be a little more stronger and only God knows what comes after this. <clears throat> but even in the midst of all of this, you and I can have that joyfulness of spirit because we know God is with us. God is in the midst of this. No matter what comes, whether in Israel or Iran or even in the United States, we recognize that God is with us. And with that, again, comes 
a joyfulness, a spiritual joyfulness, not the imitation joy that the world tries to create, not the fake happiness of the world, but one that is based on reality, the reality that the risen Lord truly lives and truly lives in each of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. I believe in one God. <clears throat> all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, from God from God and life from life, true God from true God, begotten and made from substantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again before the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. And I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ is risen, therefore with faith we bring our prayers to the Father with confidence and with joy saying, Risen Lord, hear us. For the Holy Catholic Church scattered throughout the world, for the Pope, our Bishop, for all priests, deacons, and faithful, that ever united in faith and charity, we may announce to the world the joy of Christ's resurrection. In faith we pray. For all who need our prayers, especially the poor within our community, that we might minister to Christ, who though risen, yet suffers still in his body, the Church, that our parish may use wisely the goods entrusted to her care, in showing forth Christian charity. In faith we pray. For all who serve Christ in the church by consecrated religious lives, ministering in education, nursing, social work, spiritual formation, and for all monastics, may the joy of the risen Lord strengthen them in their vocation. In faith we pray. For each of us gathered here today that the sacrament of Jesus, truly risen and present among us, may help us to live this day in holiness, charity, and peace. In faith we pray. <clears throat> For the sick and the suffering who look to Christ in their pain, may the good news of Easter renew their faith and give them courage in their trials. In faith we pray. And for all the faithful gone before us, may they know the forgiveness of all their sins and come at last to the glory of Christ's resurrection. In faith we pray. Loving Father, you give the world hope and joy through the glorious resurrection of Christ your Son. Hear our prayer and keep us ever faithful to you through Jesus Christ our Lord.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be always acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. To the Lord, accept the sacrifice of the man, to the praise and glory of the kingdom, for our good and all of the church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, through the resurrection of your Son, this holy oblation which your exalted church brings to your altar, which is the very cause of our eternal joy. Grant that these sacrificial gifts may bear fruit within us in perpetual happiness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to acclaim you, O Lord. But above all, to laud you ever more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. For by dying he destroyed our death, by rising restored our life. Therefore, with paschal joy, every land and people exalts in your praise. And we, with the heavenly powers and angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For through him we ask you to accept and to bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you first for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, the Pope, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants gathered here before you, you know how firmly they believe in you and dedicate themselves to you. And we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessed Joseph, her chaste spouse, your holy apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clements, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace, we command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. When the day before he was to suffer took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which is given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, and the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> The mystery of faith. <clears throat> we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the many gifts that you have given to us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at this altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, which on the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Papetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to give us all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, you bless them, and you bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, to you, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Amen. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are all those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you could enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Christ our risen, our risen, our risen. But now has Christ our Just really one announcement today outside the men of the Knights of Columbus are there and they have tickets for an affair they're having next week. If you'd like to go, a dinner dance, I think, and refreshments. Also, they're doing sign-ups and other information for the Red Bank March to Life that takes place every year. So if you'd like information for that, you can talk to the Knights outside. Also, it's nice, especially after the long Lenten fast, it's nice to have our men here from the Holy Name. Uh, you know, the Holy Name cooked all the food every Friday in Lent and worked very, very hard. So with them at the group, I want to publicly thank them uh, for the good work they did for the uh, fish fry. So give them a good hand. Let us stand as we pray. Look with merciful kindness upon your people, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries of the passion and death and the resurrection of your Son may attain in their mortal flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray God's blessing. May the grace of God our Father, who raised Jesus up in the flesh, strengthen you in hope, enrich you with his love, and fill you with joy in the assurance of your faith. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. In the prayers for the suffering church. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sins, and our hope. To the end we cry for the banishment of the need. To the end we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping, and howling tears. Her then, most gracious, and thine eyes of mercy for us. After this, our exile shall unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O God, and to a loving and sweet virgin, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. And may be in the early of Let us pray, O God, our refuge and our strength, look down with favor upon thy people who cry unto thee. And grant that through the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and Saint Joseph, our most chaste spouse, and the blessed apostles Peter and Paul and all the saints, mercifully and graciously hear the prayers which we pour forth for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church, through the same Christ our Lord. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protected against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God review that we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, the wonder about the world, seeking the nation of souls. Most sacred heart of Jesus, most sacred heart of Jesus, most sacred heart of Jesus. Amen.